Okay, so the YouTube video is now live. I'm now emailing, I'm now putting in the chat the YouTube link for those who prefer to stream on YouTube rather than via the office, via than Zoom. Hello again, everybody. Let me know in the comments if you're hearing me, please, in the chat section. Awesome stuff. Awesome. So because we're recording now on YouTube, I'm going to start over. I hope you guys don't mind. Thank you so much for being patient. Thank you for being here early. And we're ready to get the show on the road. Let's go. So good afternoon again to my UE Pelicans watching right now on Zoom and YouTube. Welcome to the first Adobe Photoshop training session put on by the Commuters Publications Committee here at the Mona Campus in Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Aishiba Cornwall and I will be your host for this afternoon's session. As you know, we'll be having one week of activities geared towards understanding how Photoshop works and to start creating wonderful masterpieces. Sessions will run from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily, and we'll be having one talented individual each day showing us the ropes in mastering the art of Photoshop. I guarantee that you won't regret being here. So we do apologize to the individuals who were unable to receive email updates and those who are having issues regarding installation. Individuals who are using Mac devices, we're working on providing you with the information needed to install the software. For those who are using other devices, please listen to the instructions that will follow uh, to successfully download the software. So the instructions are as follows. So you're going to click the link um, that was sent to you and it will bring you to a folder. Right after you click on the folder to download it, you right click on the folder rather to download it. Do not click into the folder. You're going to then use WinRAR or any extractor software to extract the folder. And you will install the software application by clicking the setup file. After that, you will sign up with the Adobe Creative Cloud. And after that, you have lifelong access to Photoshop. If you have any questions or queries, then please do not hesitate to let us know. My team there in the chat section both on YouTube and on Zoom to answer your questions or any queries you might have. If you're not already, I'm encouraging you to follow the social media pages of all our partners who were able to make this, who are able to make this event possible. We have at UE commuters, at UE commuters underscore PCC, at UE Mona Guild, at UE WJC Guild, at One Guild SDA, at Cave Hill Guild, at Open Campus Guild, at Five Islands Guild, at Elton.Daily, at Inc. Photos. Now I will be handing over now to none other than a Mikhail Henry. He is the Quality Assurance Manager on the Public Relations Committee and uh, graphics designer for the Guild. I will now hand over to you, Mr. Henry. Hello, good day. Hi, Mr. Henry, how are you? Hello, good day, I'm doing fine, and you? I'm not so bad, you know, not so bad at all. Lovely, lovely. So good morning, everyone. My name is Mikhail Henry, and just reiterating what she said, I'm the Quality Assurance Manager for the PRO Committee at the U.S. St. Augustine campus. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys the introduction to Photoshop. So for those of you who might have opened the program and find it being a bit tedious, I'm going to break it down into simple, easy, little biting blocks that you could figure it out, you know, and get into it. But before I jump into that, I'm just going to do a short presentation on what is Photoshop. So here we go. Photoshop 101. So what is Photoshop? Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop is a predominant photo editing and manipulation software in the market. 
It uses a range of full featured editing from large batches of photo to create intricate detailed paintings, illustrations, drawing that mimic those done by hand to some degree. To some persons who are looking at the photo on the left and wondering if this could be created in real, yes, it possibly can. You just have to use a series of scissors and glue and stick them together. But you could do this all together in Photoshop. So what are the uses of Photoshop? It might not be exactly what you think. Some persons think, okay, you're going to use Photoshop to just throw filters on and photos and just make things pop. That's what the commonly man would say. But it could be a bit more diverse than what you think. You can use Photoshop to do things such as designing digital artwork, which could range from flyers, labels, magazine, call cards, just to name a few. And some of these work that you would be seeing in this presentation are some of my work from my personal portfolio. In addition to such... Hi, Mikhail. Are you, are you sharing your screen? Oh, seems, yes, I thought I was, but give me a minute. Okay, no problem. Um, we're not able to see your screen if you are. Can you see it now? Can awesome. You see now? So we're able to share. You're able to see now. Thank you so much. Okay, my bad about that. I'll just start over. So what is Photoshop? For those who might have missed it, Photoshop is a predominant editing software predominant editing software that is used in the market where you can edit large batches of photos to create intricate digital paintings and illustrations to some degree. And the uses of Photoshop, so we have digital artworks such as flyers, call cards, magazine, labels, just to name a few. And these are some of my work here. In addition to such, you can have a mock-up or presentation of artwork. Now, some persons who are not familiar with what that is, Mockup is the use of the, is a used in the design process to pursue clients, and it helps the designer to determine how we would want the artwork to look in real life scenarios by warping the artwork around packaging or putting it on pieces of paper. Next, Next we have photo manipulation, which would be taught further in this course. Photo manipulation is the use of transforming or altering photos using various methods, techniques, Achieve to desire, achieve to achieve the desired results. And there's also user interface and user experience. For those of you who might be interested in web design or creating apps or mobile phones, you can actually use Photoshop to design the basic layout of how you would want your application or your web experience to be. Have you ever had the experience where use the browser and it's like everything seems clustered and clunky and you just wind up leaving or same thing in a mobile application. You could actually use Photoshop to plan out everything. Also, if you're looking for investors, for them to have a clear idea and understanding of what you're trying to convey to your users. So what's in it for me? That's a question a lot of persons would usually ask, but don't really say. So what are the benefits of using Photoshop or learning how to use Photoshop? You can actually venture into a part-time or full-time career as a graphic designer, fashion designer, as an illustrator, and those are just a few. It could make you more lucrative in the job market. Let us suppose you're going for a job interview in a marketing agency, and they are looking for someone who doesn't just understand the marketing and the dynamics, but someone who knows what persons are looking for in a good design, and they can actually use Photoshop. You will more than likely get the job because one, the company would be able to save money, which you can see in the following posts, and you'll be able to expand your portfolio. In addition, it could be a hobby that pays. So if you're a freelance graphic designer, someone could reach out to you, they need a flyer done, a call card, something, and it's a hobby that pays. So just finish wrapping up. I want everyone, don't think that Photoshop is something that's really hard. It's a really simple program. You just have to take your time to understand it and keep practicing. So as I said in the quote below, every expert was once a beginner. Even though you didn't get it right on the first try, think to yourself that you're one try less from getting it right. And if you look in the top right-hand corner, those are actually my products. And the label on the left, it was pretty much my first, if not my second design in Photoshop. And the one on the right was pretty much years of experience and figuring out what works. So I implore everyone, you know, 
Don't be scared, just keep on trying and you will get it. I like to say thank you. And now that we're done with the boring stuff, let's get into Photoshop. Before I go further, anyone has any questions, any complaints? Hi, Mr. Henry. Yes, miss. So I wanted to know, um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if anybody else in the in the chat section, check, you know, what to ask. See. But when when you we understand what Photoshop is, mm -hmm. as it relates to the creative aspects of it, like, do you think that we have to be a creative person in a sense, we have to vision what we want to create before we create it? What if you have a problem with thinking that, oh, you know, I'm not creative enough. Um, I don't know how to do these designs. You know, what advice do you have for, for us who think that way? That's a good question. Many times as designers, we find ourselves wondering, what are we going to do for our next design? Especially if a client does say, surprise me. So in that case, Google or Pinterest is your best help. I would always say to think about the simplest thing that you want to do or you want from the design and look at Google for inspirations. And what you can do now is replicate it, but add your own twist to make it feel original to you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. One more thing I would add to that also is in the event you're not sure how the design would turn out in the end, what you can do is grab a pencil and a piece of paper and just sketch the layout of the design. It doesn't have to be precise. You could just simply put, okay, box, this is where I want to put my head in, a little squiggly line, this is where I want to put the coconut trees, something else, just so you'd have an idea, okay, this is what I am aiming to achieve. Because sometimes whilst designing, you tend to get other ideas whilst designing and sometimes your first idea is your best idea. Thanks so much for that. Anyone has any questions? I'm going to look in the chat box just in case. So, if you do have any questions from Mr. Henry, uh, we do ask that you uh, just type it in the, the chat section so that yeah, he or, can see it. Or you could feel free to turn on your mic and not be shy. Or that. <laughs> There's that option also. Give you guys about a minute or so, just before I jump into anything. Also for guys, some persons like a creative environment before they start doing anything creative. So if you want, you could take this time to look, to get a scented candle, grab a cup of water, probably put on some background music before we get started. Oh, Mr. Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, uh, there's somebody from or the YouTube chat who <laughs> is uh, they're saying. So you're speaking about sketching, then refining. Not necessarily mm -hmm. sketch. It could be pretty much. Yeah, I would say sketching. Not necessarily a sketch. You could just put like simple tags on the paper so you'd know okay what's going where in terms of the layout or positioning. Um, to I'm just going to sketch on a piece of paper what I'm talking about so everyone will have a clear picture. I mean, you don't have to do this before every design, but sometimes it's wise so you won't spend too much time in Photoshop trying to figure out what you want done. It's pretty much something like this. I mean, I didn't go too in depth, but the footer, you put the head in, which would be the header text. This would be a background. And you could just draw little boxes so you know where things are going. And to answer a, chat, a question I saw in the chat earlier, do you have to be able to draw good, to be a good designer? No, you have to be able to draw like a professional artist to use Photoshop. Once I always tell persons your imagination and understanding of the tools are your limitation in Photoshop. 
No questions. I think that's it for the questions so far. Any questions in the YouTube chat? Uh, that was the only one we had uh, for now. Okay, all right. Well, I guess we could start designing then. I think someone said, okay. So the person who said when they extracted the folder in the email, they only saw pictures. You would see the pictures and those are the pictures that we are going to use today in this exercise. In addition to that, you should see the Adobe Photoshop file in the event you want to actually see what I did in depth later on, but you want to make corrections. So when you, I think that's it for all the questions and issues. Mr. Henry, before you continue, uh, mm -hmm. there is somebody just uh, for persons who might just be coming in our show. Mm -hmm. uh, they're asking about how to download. So I'm just going to go over that instructions um, okay. on how to download and I will hand it right back over to you. Okay, no problem. So instructions on how to download. You're going to click the link that was sent uh, to your, your email. It will bring you to a folder. You're going to right click on the folder and download it. Do not click into the folder. You should just right click on the folder. You're going to use WinRAR or any extractor software to extract the folder. Then you will install the software application by clicking the setup file. You then would have to sign up with Adobe Creative Cloud and that will be it. You'll have access to Photoshop. Uh, right over to you, Mr. Henry. All right. I'll give those persons at least, let's say, two minutes to get them up and running. I don't want to start and leave too many persons behind, rather. Understood. Yes. I know what you mean. Also, if you have any questions in the meantime about the software, what we're going to do, you can always ask. And while they're doing that, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, why did you think that this event you know, is important. Why is Photoshop important? No, why do we have to care about designing? You know, what is your take on that? <laughs> That's a really good question. Well, due to COVID pandemic that has occurred globally, everyone is pretty much doing all of their marketing or anything online. So now would be a good time to actually learn how to use Photoshop, the dynamics of Photoshop. So for a lot of persons who are entrepreneurs back at home, you have your local business and you need social media marketing done. You can actually use Photoshop to help market your product. So you might take a picture, you could afford to add text, edit shape, you could throw in some illustrations to help make the product seem more catchy in the market. In addition to that, some companies who had everything, I'll call it dialogue, where they wrote everything on paper, they are looking for websites to be created. Some persons who are programmers may not have the, the key sense of the design, the layout, so you can actually use Photoshop in, in synergy with Adobe XD to create the website or mobile interface. So I would say it's a good time to learn about Photoshop. I have one last question. I promise it's a last <laughs> no question. No problem, keep them coming. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I wanted to know. So we know mm -hmm. we have Photoshop. Yeah, it's great for marketing and so on, mm -hmm. especially now since we're living in a di digital era, as somebody mm -hmm. said in the, the chat section. but. I mean, you have other, look here, I love Canva. I don't know if anybody right. else knows Canva. Canva but I is really love good. Canva. Mm -hmm. Right, so why why is Photoshop probably better to use than maybe a Canva? See, somebody else can be saying, me too. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves Canva, so why do you have to sit down <laughs> and learn Photoshop? That seems so hard. Trust me, it's not hard. There are things that you can do in Photoshop that you cannot do in Canva. For example, drop shadows, or if you want to do, make a text scene shimmery or glittery based on what you might need done for your project, you can afford to do that. You can't do photo manipulations in Canva as good as in Photoshop. Okay. In addition to that, let's see, hmm, what am I missing? Though Canva may seem intuitive, you know, very easy to follow. Photoshop. Think of Photoshop as, let's say, an art, a digital art studio with every possible thing you need. You just have to understand how they work. You can look at it now. Okay, thank you so much. The floor is yours, I promise. That was my last question <laughs> for now. <laughs> That's no problem. That's no problem. So, hello? Yes, hello. 
Right, I have a question for today. No Apart from the software, what else were we supposed to download? From, there was an email that should have been sent to you with some pictures for that we're going to use today in the workshop. Um, did did Shani, you receive that? I think I see something from Shani's. Uh, trying to look at the button of the email. Is it in a Google Drive? Probably yes, hello, be. it is. Yes. There's a Google Drive, okay. I... Or Candice, if you have any more questions, you can just post them in the chat uh, so that our team can assist you. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. I forgot to attach the fonts via email, so I'm going to post a, a link where you guys can access it in the Google chat, in the chat right now, right? Just give me a second to access my browser. guys so i just posted a link in the chat where you could click to download all of the fonts that we will be using today if you're having problems with it that's not really that shouldn't be an issue because you can use any font it's just for you guys to have an understanding or clear understanding of how to use the program any further questions before i jump in Hi, Michael. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. So someone is asking if they mm -hmm. have to create a new account or are they given one for the Creative Cloud? You have to create a new account for the Creative Cloud. You should be able to sign in with either Facebook, Google, or Apple if you have an Android, if you have a Google account. Okay, thank you. I guess a lot of persons are still installing the software as we speak. So someone just asked in the chat, what is your recommended tutorial for Photoshop? At the Adobe website, a particular YouTube or site, I ask this because it is easy to be overwhelmed with all that info available. That's a really good question. If you want to learn anything, and I mean literally anything about Photoshop, there's this guy on YouTube called Pix Imperfect. He breaks down Photoshop into the real simple experience. Most of his videos tend to be like between 10 to 15 minutes in length. So it's not too long, it might not be too short. So you could check out his page. There's also a guy called Dan Ski, if I remember correctly. So you could check those two guys out. I'll post the link to their YouTube channels right in the chat so you guys could click on them. That should give some more time to, so give some more people time to install the program.
All right, so guys, I just posted two links to the two YouTube channels that you could go download to watch the videos. And I saw someone, he mentioned that you could use the font. That's another good website you can use to download fonts if you have problem accessing the Google Fonts. But as I said, it's not that necessary. So just to have an idea of how many persons are able to log into the software without any problems, can you just type yes or raise a hand in the chat box, please? Yes, fun squirrel is good also. Okay, we seem to have a lot of persons who are doing good with the software. Anybody who have any problems, 87%. Okay. Where you could log in, you could use your Facebook account, your Google account, or your Apple account to log into the Creative Cloud platform. Um, you having problems? What problems are you having, Denny? Did I pronounce the name right, right? Yeah, i use my mic. Um, you see where, where it says set up? Mm -hmm. um, um, I should download that, right? Yeah. Can you share your screen? All Okay, I can see your screen. Yes, I believe you'd have to click setup. I believe you'd have to download it and then set it up onto your computer. Um, sorry, excuse me. I'm not supposed to download the setup file separate by itself. You need to download the entire folder first as a zip file. You can't download it specifically just from like the setup folder within the Google Drive. You need to go back, yeah, from there and download, like right click and click download, yeah. Because if you do it separately by itself, it won't work. Quick question, Aisha. Um, hello? Um, Mateo, you were asking something? 
Yeah, so I was gonna ask if you have had any experience with that. Oh, no. Yeah, none. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, Mikhail, I have a question Hello. about the Creative Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not seeing where I need to sign into that. Where's the prompt so, for that? Hmm, truthfully, I'm not too sure. I'm not really sure how to answer this question. Because I just downloaded the mm -hmm. file and everything's working like I have Photoshop open, but I don't mm -hmm. see anything saying like create. You have to sign or... Well, I believe you don't have to worry about it for this exercise right about okay. now. Because I have, mm -hmm. Cause I you have, have. Um, the pictures that you told us to um, get and the fonts. Mm -hmm. I have those, but I'm okay. just not sure where Creative Cloud is. Okay. I guess you don't have to worry about that now. What you could do later after the exercise is check in your start tab and go to the Adobe folder and look for the Adobe Creative Cloud application. Okay. All yes. right. Thank you. Quick question. How many other persons have the software open without any problems and they have the images that we're going to use? Well, the images and the fonts that we're going to use. Could you just type yes in the chat box or I do? Fonts are in, yes, you could find a link in the Google chat. In the chat. But it seems like everyone seems to be up to speed. I will send the link again where you could get the fonts in the chat for anyone who has now reached that stage. Right, sorry, Mr. Henry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The, fonts. the fonts you're getting Not from the fonts. The images. The, uh, yeah. The images that you should have gotten an email from the committee with those files. Uh, okay. The name of that folder is Adobe Photoshop. Um, introduction. It's the introduction um, file that we got. So yes. that's the one with all the pictures. Yes, that's, that's right. I'm not sure if they renamed it. That's why I didn't say it. Okay. I think everyone should be ready by now. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and a lot of persons are experiencing some problems. But guys, since we already have an hour and let's say 20 minutes remaining, we're going to jump into Photoshop and learn how to use the software. If you didn't get it installed by chance, you could just grab a piece of paper and just take quick notes or there's the source file that I attached in the email that you could replicate afterwards to make sure you understand what I did. All right, so I'm gonna start back sharing my screen. So, hello guys, this is the beautiful world of Photoshop. And this is what it, your software might look like if you have used it before. However, if you haven't edited anything in Photoshop before, you will not see these images here. So what you're going to do now, before you actually click create new, what I want for everyone to do, Questions for those persons who are having problems signing in. Did any prompt came up? Any prompt came up to um, activate Photoshop? Because if that didn't come up and the programs open and it seems to be working fine, you don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, 
right, so what we're going to do before we start creating anything in Photoshop, we're going to select edit in the tab above. Yeah, you have to download each one. It's a fun family. I'm hearing you clearly, Mr. Henry. Hello, say that. Can you be that? Hello? I'm not Hi. hearing you clearly. Let me tell you what you say. Can you repeat that again, please? Thank you. We're not hearing you clearly. Oh, you're not hearing me clearly. Testing one, two. Can you hear me now? Yeah. It's interesting. Everyone's hearing me clearly, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, you don't have to copy the fonts to add them to the main folder. You just download the folder, access the fonts, highlight them, and just click install. You don't have to paste them in any specific folder. Once you install them, they would show up automatically in Photoshop. In some cases, or based on the version of Photoshop you have, you may have to close the program and reopen the program for the fonts to show up. But as I said before, it's not that necessary. It's just for you to understand how to use the program. So I'm assuming that everyone has Photoshop open and the screen looks similar to this. So what you're going to do before we start to create anything we're going to hit edit in the tab at the top and we're going to come down to preferences at the bottom. Now after selecting preferences, we're going to go to general. After you open general, what I want you to change is the hood color picker to a, hood, to a hue wheel and set it to small. You'll see why later and even if you have any questions. Next, we're going to move on to tools in the left panel over here where you can see my mouse. And you're going to select zoom with scroll wheel. This allows us to zoom in and out of the canvas whilst editing. If you don't have that activated, you'd have to find yourself pressing control and plus or control and minus, which would take up a bit more time. And also, I would like you to click zoom, click to point to center. So that way, wherever the mouse is, when you scroll on your, on your mouse, it would zoom to that point in particular. Next thing I would like you to click is file handling and you set it to five minutes. Moving a little further in terms of the cursors on the left panel, I would like you to select normal brush tip. I think it might be set to standard as default but I want you to put it as normal. Um, also, any will show course here in brush tip. This will allow you to see where the brush actually is on the canvas. I am not sure. There's a live link on YouTube, so I believe. I believe you should be able to access that afterwards. If I'm not mistaken. Also, I would like you to select show brush leash while smoothing. So that way, whilst you're painting, you'd still be able to see a brush and it won't disappear. If you click standard, the brush will look like this and you won't see the size of the brush when you're masking or stuff like that. Can you go over what you do after you press general, please? Oh, okay. After you select general, you're just going to go to hood color picker, you're going to select hue wheel and set it to small. I think as default, it might be strip. The color wheel seems more intuitive. Got that. Then you're going to select tools and you're going to click or activate zoom with scroll wheel. Next, you're going to click zoom, click to point to center. Afterwards, you're going to go into cursors and you're going to click normal brush tip and you're going to click show course here in brush tip and you're going to click show brush leash while smoothing. 
in other places I would like you to put precise. And that's it for now. That's it for now. There are other stuff you can do in the preferences, but we're not going to get too caught up in that. Select OK. And now you want to create your first. Now you're going to create your first artwork. So what you're going to do is click Create New. Photoshop would usually have some presets that you can click on in some cases with different pixel sizes. However, we're going to create an Instagram size flyer. Um, the size for portrait Instagram posts is 13, 1350, 1315 height by 1080. Now, if you're unsure of what the pixel size is maybe for of Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter posts, you can always check them out on Google to be sure. So after that's done, you could also set your, you should also set your resolution to 72 and not 300, just so that the image would look really good in the event you do wind up printing it. You can also set the name to presentation flyer, I guess, or my first flyer, whatever you wish, wish to name it. And then hit create. This is what Photoshop should look like on your computer. So now we're just going to run through the tools before we start doing anything in the program. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Um, yes, my Photoshop says it could not create it because the flat disk was full. Is that something with my laptop itself? Mind saying that again? It's some kind of muffled. Yes. So, I'm saying that Photoshop said it could not create the um, the page because the scratch bits are full. So I was wondering if there's something with my laptop itself. I didn't catch the end clearly, but I'm assuming your scratch um, disk is probably full. That's what they said. That's Maybe what said. I can. I'm not sure if I can help because I had this problem as well when I just tried to download it yeah. and. So I checked my um, storage, how much, and it was full. So I tried to down, to delete some files. And after I did that, like I had a, like a movie editing software that was taking up a lot of space. And after I deleted that, it yeah. ran um, properly. Like everything was fine after that. So it might be that you have too many stuff on your computer. Cause I had that same problem as well at the beginning. That might be possible. All right, no problem. And I'll move ahead in the meantime while it's the uninstall. So when you open Photoshop, all of the tools that you would necessarily need will be on the left-hand side here where you see my mouse. And first on the top, you have the move tool where you would click to move. And there would be a little dialogue box showing what each tool does. There's a elliptical marquee tool. There's your magic wand tool. There's a shape tool. I'll go over the most tools that we've more than like to use. There's a rectangle to text. This is your text tool. In addition to that, you have a magnifying glass if you wish to zoom. So how you zoom with the magnifying glass, you click on the magnifying glass, right click on your artboard and drag to the right to zoom in, or drag to the left to zoom out. So now let's start. Let's start by adding some color to the background. So what you can do is press Edit, Fill, and then another box would come up with color. Since we're doing the reference where it's a tropical fly, we're going to click the kind of sky blue color. The eyedropper tool you can use it to select any color inside of here. But we're more interested in this blue somewhere within this region. We're going to click OK and click OK again. Now the background has changed its color. If you wish to do that much faster, you could press Shift on your keyboard and F5. Now, afterwards, we're going to import text or add the text. So you select text option on your left hand panel, which would be as T, or you can press T on your keyboard. Just select. 
uh, voxel appear in the image. And you could just start typing. If the text is too small, that's not a problem. You could always size it afterwards. So I think it has some splash. If you press enter, the text will just move to the other line below. So you don't have to worry about that. So, right. so now we have our text here, and it's very, very small. We come to the character panel here to increase the size. In some cases, if the character panel, you can't see it, what you can, what you can do is come to window and scroll down and select character. If you're not seeing your layers panel, you come here to get your layers. As I mentioned that, let me go over what the layer panel does for getting to anything else. So essentially your layers panel is pretty much your best friend when it comes to Photoshop. And I say a best friend because this is what you would be using most times when you're interacting with each of the different pictures. Though it might seem a bit tedious, just think of the layers as a deck of cards with all the layers that you would possibly need. So this here, is your text layer with the word summer in it. The eyeball next to it is physically, stands for visibility. So if you click on it, it will turn it off, but if you click on it, it will come back. In the event you wish to lock this layer here so that it doesn't move, you can click the lock icon right here. And if you select the move tool, it will not select the text, but it will select anything else in the tool. Right? But we're going to unlock it because we need to edit this text right now. So what we're going to do is increase the size. You can click on the drop bar, the drop down, and increase the size accordingly. Let's try 36. If your text happens to look like this, don't be asleep. Don't be afraid. You can always click this option here to increase the spacing between each letters. And if you click it, realize it was too small, you can always increase it. Someone said I'm moving a little too fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry if I'm moving too fast. I'm going to slow down a bit more. Sorry about that. Where's character? How to get the character panel on the left? You can click Edit, not Edit, Window, and you select Character right here. It's right beneath Channels and above Character Style. So I just clicked it, so my window will go up, disappear. But if I click in window at the top and come down to character, the box will come back. Is it possible for you to go back over how you got it blue? Because I'm lost. Oh, okay. from... my bad about that. My bad about that. Let's see if I can. control Z. Right, so this is your canvas here. This is what it looks like. And there might be some persons who are stuck here also. What you're going to do is firstly unlock the layer. We have a lock icon next to it. You unlock the layer. And you're going to press edit, fill. That's all. For those who might have missed it, you're going to select edit at the top, at the top menu bar. And then you're going to come down to fill. It's right above the word stroke. And then when you select that, another box will appear. What you can do, in some cases it might be set to foreground color as before, or possibly background color, but you want to set it to a color of your choice. So you're going to click color. Now, another color sample or color picker will appear. And this is where, hello? It doesn't look like yours. That's my problem. Oh, what doesn't look like mine? Director of Photoshop. The so layout? The layout. I'm, so I'm not seeing where you see unlock and all those stuff. Really? So tell me something. Can you see your layers panel at the bottom right? No, sir. Okay, all right. Let's give you yeah. a Every adjustment. Okay. In that case, a lot of persons probably have that issue. So 
to activate your layers panel, let's suggest I didn't have the layers panel. So let's suggest that probably some of these things are missing and you wish to access them. You would go to window and then you would come down and you would click layers. And there is your layer panel. Now, if you don't want it floating on the screen because it might be in your way, what you would do is select it at the top here and drag it across till you see that blue line comes up. That means it will be docked to the left. If you wish to have it, sorry, if you wish to have it separate, you can actually select on the icon as I'm doing here and put it in a cascade with the other options. Everybody with me? Just in case some persons might be lost. Can you go over that layer thing for me, please? No problem. Tell me where you stop at. Did you get it to show up on your screen? I see layer channel and pass. Am I supposed to see that? Am I right? Wait, layers channel and path. I think you should have, yes, I think you should have three docs here. Layers here, channels here, and path, maybe, right yes. here? Okay. Yeah, you more than likely you should have that. But that's not a problem. If you get the layers to show up, that's all you need. Anyone else having any issues with the layouts? Any other problems so far? So far, no problem, and everyone seems good, I assume. So it should be layers. Um, the three, what are the three options? Layers and what, and what, sir? You have layers, channels, and path, but we're mainly interested in the layers tab right about now. So you don't have to worry about it. Any problems before I move on? Yes. Seeming everyone is up to speed and move through the problem. I'm still at that little black screen. I'm not even sure why I'm still at that little black screen. Hello, say that again. I don't quite catch I'm up. Still at that little, I'm, I am at a black screen in the center of my thing. I, I... Can you share a screen so I could see what you're talking about? I can't share while others are sharing. Can't, can't share? Let me stop sharing soon. All right, try now, let me see. Are we seeing it now, sir? Not as yet. It says Richard had, okay, it just popped up. See, this is what it's happening. So you're just seeing histories, properties, and stars. Okay. I guess I have a slow computer. Wait, what did you see? All right, that's what I'm seeing. You seen it now, sir? Oh, okay, yes, I'm seeing. Oh, okay. Okay. That's where I'm stuck. So to get that widescreen, I'm supposed to go where? File? Yes, go to file. Yes. And you're going to click new, new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have you have a layer here already. You just have it as black. Oh, wow. I just realized that. How do I get it to to to, to the white thing that you wiped? You wiped. Well, what I did, I click file new. Okay, it's just popping up here. Close this. 
Mm, you could leave it. You could leave it in case you missed something or someone else did. So from here, so what do I do from here? From here, what do you do? You set the width of the canvas or the artboard. Since it's an Instagram post, we're going to keep the width as 1080. So 1080. And for the height, we're going to set it to 1350. Right. And resolution, set your resolution to 300. You can click create. Ah. Yes. Ah. So a new document should show up on your screen and everyone should, should have this at least. Okay, everyone should have this. You said I've already had the layout, so I'm good from here. Yes, you can go from here. Right. Watch right, I'll share back my screen and then you guys can follow along. Can you stop sharing your screen so I could share mine? To the person who just came in, we're pretty much now loading up Photoshop and about to start. What you missed before was just a presentation of what is Photoshop and a few questions that persons had asked you. Um, hello? Yes, Keisha. I can't seem to move from right here. I'm sharing my screen just now. So whenever I click, I know I'm way behind because I've been trying to maneuver it. Wow. Um, whenever I click. Maybe, maybe I can help with this as I helped earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes, no problem. Go ahead. Um, I go to so you have to, Keisha, um, so you have to exit out of the folder. You should not have clicked into the folder. You need to go back. So um go back to the photoshop file itself with the folder yeah this so right click right click on that file okay so it's just telling me set up uh-huh um delete the setup files that you've downloaded before because they won't work unless they're part of the full folder right so you can delete those files, but what you'll be doing now mm -hmm. is downloading that full folder that you just right clicked on. So you're gonna download it from there after you delete these. This is what I get. Wait, I can't see. You just can remove Wait. them. You don't need to open the setup files because you shouldn't be downloading them separately at all. So just right here where you see Photoshop, just download the folder. So go ahead again and right click? Yes. All right. And then, oh, oh download. Yeah. Zip field. So is it something with my laptop then? Yeah, maybe, because at that point, it should start downloading a zip file of the folder and then you'll have to extract that. Okay. But fine. I think so, the problem might be that you already have the setup files downloaded. So once you delete those, try again. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that should work after that, okay? All right, thank you much. No problem. Any further problems? I'm going to start by sharing my screen. I believe this is how everyone's Photoshop layout probably looks right about now. 
So I'm going to address that since a lot of persons might have that problem and we didn't see. So to get yours looking how mine was looking just a few minutes ago. Right, we're going to go into window, which is the second to last option just before help in the top menu. We're going to workspace. Yours might be set to this essentials default. What you can do is click graphic and web. And then it would be a more simpler looking like this. Don't worry too much about the options here because you may not use all of them. So you would have the character panel, your paragraph panels, glyphs, and layers. Everyone's with me. The resolutions, yes, I think it was pixels, but I think it was pixels. So moving forward, we're going back to where we were with the background. What we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is change the color of this here. So some of you may have a white, some of you may have a black based on the color selected in the color box, but that's not an issue. We're going to click edit, we're going down to fill, we're going to select color, and the sky blue color here. Some of you, the color sampler might be down at red, probably purple. What you're going to do is drag the slider here so that we'll be able to select the color that you need. So since we're interested in a sky blue type of color, we're going to bring the slider to a cyanish blue color. And we're going to sample the color from inside here. If you realize when I move the eyedropper tool, the color changes in this box here. This gives you a clear idea of the color that you're about to select. But since we don't want gray or black, we're going to go up to the sky blue image right here. After you select the color, then you click OK here again. And then the background color should change. It's a bit darker than what I require, but we would leave it as is for now. Everyone up to see with that. Okay, I will continue moving forward. Okay. So now we're going to add our text. So you're just going to come in the left panel and select T, or you can press T on your keyboard and you have the text box option available. You're just going to select T, select on your canvas, backspace the words that's already there, and you're just going to type summer. So you're going to put SUM in the first line and press enter and put MER on the second line. So now the M text seems to be very, very small, very small, but we want it much larger than that. So what we're going to do now, with the text already selected in the layers panel, we're going to increase it. So in the character panel, you come down to the text size, and you click on the text, drop down the menu, and you can select a font size. If your text happens to look like this, do not be afraid. You can always increase the space between the letters with the option right next to it. So you're going to click, let's say 24. If you realize can you go for how you put in the text, please? How do you the text? Yes. This, you can see my arrow on the screen right now. So on the left, on the left, where you have some of your tools, you're going to select T. After you select it, then you're going to come to your canvas and just click anywhere on the board. doesn't really matter. And you're just going to start typing. Right. Since you don't want that little bit, you press delete on the keyboard and it goes away. Everybody got that? Got that. Lovely. So now, since the text, your text might be small, so you can come over here in the text panel and increase the size. And if you need a size that's beyond the 72, you can click the numbers inside here and change it to, let's say, 100, and the text will get bigger and bigger. 
However, we don't want our text so big, so I think 72 points should be just trying for now. But we need more space between the letters. So what we're going to do is click on the drop down and change set it to probably 48. That seems to be what we're looking for right about now. Just right about now. What we're going to do in this part of the session is learn how to use the text and just lay out the information accordingly. So after we get our text how we want it, supposedly, we're going to select the move tool, which another way, instead of just clicking up here, you can press V on your keyboard and click whatever you need and drag it accordingly. So you're going to drag the text to the center of your arm. After you have drawn the text to the outlet, we're going to add another text because the name of the event is Summer Splash. For those who might not have seen the flyer for what we're going to do, I'm just going to show it to you so we have an idea of what we're going to do. This is the flyer that we're going to do today. So Summer Splash. If you want, you can keep it open just to make sure you follow what was done in the previous flyer or the reference flyer rather. Seems intense, but we're gonna get through this. Right. Right. So now that we have had, have had a good look of what the previous slide is, we're gonna try to replicate it. So since we have the word summer here, we need to have the word present, like who is presenting the event. So I press T on your keyboard to select the text option and just select on the canvas. This size, Initially, it's too big, so we're going to reduce it to, let's say, something about 16, or probably even 10. Right, lovely. And the presenters for this event, I have it as post quarantine. You can name it whatever you want, it's just to have an idea of how the text is. Post quarantine presents. Now, if this tends to happen, you can always reduce it in the panel over here. So we can continue typing and adjust the height later. Everybody follow with me right now. Hello. Okay, I guess I'm assuming that no one has any problem. Okay, something just came in the chat. Lovely. All right. So now to get the two words closer to each other, we come back on this leading right here. And you reduce it from 48 to something like 18. I could make it probably a bit closer and set it to 16. So now what about the date for the event? Everybody has to know when this event is going to be. So we're going to select the, team to the text tool again. And the, in this case, we're going to draw a text box. So how we're going to do this now is select or right click and just drag on your canvas. When you do that, you would see some white dotted lines forming a white dashes forming a box. That is your text box. So nothing would fall out of your text box. Really. So you can hit backspace and just start typing the date. So let's say today is Monday, we're going to put Monday, it's what, the 26th. Let's change it to July since summer is really predominantly during July. I'm sorry that my computer is too slow. For you. But I've gone a bit slow, but we're pressed for time. This is going to finish at four. So we would have to watch your recording. After you have the text here with the date, you could press the tick option to confirm that that is what you want in that text box or the changes that you did, you want them. So now that that is selected, since we have all the text in the layouts of all the information needed, we're going to add the images. So to add the images, you can do it by two options. First one, you could select file, Click open and uh, box it open. Now, 
everyone may have their images stored at some different location. So you find the images wherever you have them stored on your computer. So the first thing that we're going to do then is the sky. The sky, which is the back of the image. So we want you to click on the sky, hit open. Initially, that image would open in a separate tab. Sometimes I tend to open images in a separate tab in the event. I would like to zoom in, make any touches before I officially use it. If it is, I want to remove a watermark, remove background or something of that sort. But we're not going to get too much into that today. So we're going to drag the image. We're going to select the image in a new tab and drag it across. Mr. Good um, can you go back and how you insert the image, please? Okay, no problem. So we're going to file, open, the window will appear, and we're going to look wherever you have that file with the images stored. For some it might be in your downloads option, some it might be documents, I'm not sure where you see it. Okay, I got it, thank you very much. Now, now we're going to open the sky image, that's the first image we're going to open. Open. It will open in a separate tab. And when it opens, you're going to click and drag it into the tab that we're editing in currently. So now we're going to align it where we want it. Now, if we look closely, it doesn't fit the canvas. And we want it to fit the canvas. Right. So what you're going to do now is click on these, these little boxes controls to resize. When you click on that to resize. Hello? Hello? My um, open is gray. It's grayed out. It's grayed out. I cannot click it. Just is grayed out? Yeah. What, what is grayed out? Oh, you open? Yeah. That's because you probably didn't finish editing the text. So when you finish with the text, click the tick option on the top of your screen. Um, Mark, mm -hmm. Mark, Mark Dale? Mark Dale, okay. yes. Oh, Mark Dale, uh, turning to right. Um, just mm -hmm. a quick question. Um, you mind if I share my screen a minute? That's no problem. All right, no problem. I'll stop sharing. Um, hold on, one sec. No problem. Uh, I'm stuck here because I'm not seeing the panels that you have on the corner here. Oh, okay, right. Okay, what I did to counteract that is I clicked on window. I directed everyone to select window. Window, all oh, right. Yeah, right, click on window. I can't see. It. I was going to tell you to select workspace, but it's grayed out. I'm not sure oh. why. Oh, because you didn't finish editing the text. So come out of window and select the tick, right? Right. Right, now you head back to the window at the top. Click workspace and click mm -hmm. graphic and web. All right. Right. Should change in a bit. Right. This right. is how everyone's tab should should look more than likely. Where you have history, you can click the two or the double arrows to reduce that because you're not really interested in the history right above. But oh yeah, you're clicking you're clicking no, where? The, the double arrows at the top right hand corner. Right. Right, lovely. Right, no, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I did that. Mm -hmm. Right, right, you, the section we have properties library composition layers, you're not entirely interested in that right about now. So if right. you move to your far right, where you see those three dashed lines, mm -hmm. you can click on that. Or right click on it, I think, yes, right click on it and click close tab or close group. Close group. Oh, hold on. Yeah. If you're not able to do it, that's no problem. You have the layers panel at the bottom. All right. So you got the three dash lines. Can you right click on them? Close tab group, right? Yeah. All also right, you no have problem. to also you have to um, finish editing the text. Click the tick option at the top here. Yes, I did. All right. Yes. All right. So for anyone who who is having the problem, 
with the layouts, this is a way that you could fix it. All right, yeah, I got it. Now. Right, anybody else has anybody else had that problem? What? Everybody, everybody got through that, right? Just want to be sure before I move forward. Can you stop sharing your screen so I can? Um, oh, just quick question. How you reduce the space? Okay, the space right where you could resize the text on the right next to it, where you see auto. So there's two A's, one above the other. This? Yes. You can click on the arrow, the drop down box, and you could increase the sizes between each row. Oh, okay, got it. No problem. I, I, I'll stop share. I'll share. I'll stop share now. All right. Cool. How do I? Ah, cool. So, anybody have any any problems they would like to be finally forward? Yes. Hello. Hello. How did you get, get post-quarantine and present? Mm -hmm. be like that. Like yeah. because you sent in the center, did you just press space or did you press something? Oh, okay. no, I didn't press anything. I'll show you what I did. I'll share my screen. Okay. So for post-quarantine, when you select the text option and you type the word, your Question, did yours run in one straight line? Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Yours run across in one straight line, or when you press enter, it's all aligned to the right or the left? It, it runs just like yours in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do, you can type the post quarantine present one straight line. All right. What you're okay. going to do is move the cursor in front of the word presents, just like how you would in a Microsoft Word document. And just press enter. If it does not center a line like this here, what you can do is highlight the text and your paragraph options at the top here. Can select. So it might be aligned right like this, means, or probably aligned left. Not sure what seconds might be before. But we're just interested in center alignment. Okay, thank you. Can you start back from when you added the um the sky to the image, please, and then continue? All right, thank you. Any... Hey, hello. Excuse me. Yes, hello. Um, my text is not showing up. Um, text. I'm. Yeah, I'm not sure why the layer is there. And when I type, I see the word, but it's not coming up onto it's the back. It's not coming up onto the back. Mind sharing your screen so I can see where you are. Right. OK, text is not coming up. Right. Did you type anything? Yeah, I did, but I deleted it. Deleted it? So what are we going to do? Okay. What you have? All right. What are you going to do? We need to press escape on the keyboard or the tick option at the top. You're going to try creating a new text. Um, right. So what I want you to do is just click anywhere on your canvas just out. and type something for me. It doesn't really matter what it is. Open. Yeah. That's because you probably did it. Nothing is coming up. Can you finish with the text? Did it come up? Uh, option. No. That little orange box keeps coming up. Can you? That is very strange. Really, really Can you draw a text box for me? So click and just drag. 
Why do you have a white box? I've never seen that before, truthfully. Yes, can you click your text options at the left? Because I've not seen the panels that you have on the corner here. Oh, okay, right. What I did to counter it is I... Okay, start typing something now, let me see. Yeah, I'm typing, but nothing is coming up. This is very, very, very strange. I've never seen this happen before. Um, wait, tell me something. Can you move down to your layers panel? Or can you open it? Probably the background layer is above your text, so that could be a problem. One I likely should appear at the top, but let's see what happens. To close off this tab with the properties, libraries, and comps, can you select the tree? All right, right click on that and click, oh, click on the tick option at the top by a text editor. Please, with the same page. So carry your cursor or your mouse to the top mm -hmm. where you see that tick and you click the tick. Now that that's over, we're going to click over where you have properties, libraries, and their competitions, the three dashed lines. I want you to right click on that. Yeah, right click on it. Mm -hmm. Not clicking. So it's Can you click your layer? Can you click down below where you have the layers tab and drag it out in the open? Because I want to see how your layers are arranged. So click on the tab where you have layers, click and drag, right? Just drag it out in the open. Are you clicking? Yeah, I am, but it's not moving, so I'm not sure what's happening. You're not sure what's happening. That's relatively strange. The text is confirmed. Okay, can you? This is very strange. It's not giving me. Okay, your screen disappeared. I think the computer, your computer is just slow, probably. I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. Okay, right. It's very, very strange. Really, I'm not sure why your text isn't showing. Sure. 
I'm tempted to tell you to close the program and to restart it just in a minute. It was something that the company I'm going to try some suggestions in the chat, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to see. Okay, no problem. If anything, just let me know. But let's see how far we can reach before how we come up. All right, so I'm going to continue sharing my screen. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to add this guy. For those who might not have had this guy, who didn't get to add this guy. So we're going to select file, open. And we're just going to click sky. Sky would automatically open in another tab. So what you have to do is drag it across into the tab that we're editing at the top here. Now, let's suppose that you already have the image that you want to add in a window. What you can do is open in File Explorer. Gonna click the same sky image if you already have a window open next to Photoshop and can click on sky and just drag it into the canvas we're editing currently. Everyone follow, right? You may have two copies, however, we only need one. It was just for you to understand the process. So we're gonna delete the copy that we don't need. So now we're at the sky layer. We need to get it to fill the entire app, to fill the top part of the app. So what we're going to do is text the bounding boxes right here and just increase it. So we're going to click, right click, and just drag up to your right. If you drag down, it gets smaller, pretty much resizing an image in Microsoft. However, if you wish to extend both sides simultaneously, what you're going to do is press Alt on your keyboard. And it will increase with the aspect, the aspect ratio locked to the center. Right. So if you realize when I make it smaller, it gets smaller both on the left and the right. And if I try to make it big, it gets bigger on both left and right. Whereas if I click one corner, it moves slightly. So we're going to get it to the edge of the box. Don't worry if it's over your words, we're going to tend to that afterwards. Just gonna hit enter to confirm the changes. For some the boxes, hello. Hello, someone's talking. If you're talking and I hear you clearly. Now that that is selected, since we have all the in, now, yes. all the information. Whoever has their mic on, could you please turn it off, please? Thank you. So to add the energy, so it might. All right, lovely. Someone was talking just a while ago. Just in case. No. No, just my voice. So now, in the event that some of you might have, let's say, the sky image this big, and you want to center it to the artboard, what you can do is click here. Where you, once you have your new tool selected, you see these bars here. Now, what you want to do is to align the sky image or the sky layer to your artboard or canvas. So you're going to come where you see these three dots here, and you're going to click at where you have aligned to, you're going to click selection, and set, set the canvas. Now that that's selected, you would see that you have these options available to select. So this means to align to the center of the canvas, horizontal, the horizontal center, this means to align to the left edges, align to the right edges, align to the vertical centers. But instead of just saying them, I'll just click them so you get a better idea of what it does. So this will align the sky image to the vertical center. This would align it to the to the left, but if you want to align it to the top, you're going to click this option here and align it to the center, so the image is front and center. However, it's a little too big, so I'll just shrink it a little bit. Back to the top. 
I got this guy over, but I'm clicking on it, but I'm not getting the options to make it larger. You're not getting the options to make it larger. Um, interesting. Um, press Control and T on your keyboard. It could be the version of Photoshop you guys have also. Not bad about that. So when you press Control and T, you should see these bounding boxes around your image. These come with some tools at the top here. It works now. Thank you. It works now? Okay, lovely. So you can go ahead and resize it by clicking the boxes at the edge of the photo. So if you click at the top right corner, you increase that way. Click at the middle. On some older versions of Photoshop, it may not scale like how mine is scaling. It scales something like this. You get the picture. If yours tend to scale like this or like this, based on the version of Photoshop you have, what you can do is select Shift on your keyboard so it locks the aspect ratio and it would size like this accordingly. Excuse me, mm -hmm. where do you go to um, download, to insert the sky? The sky? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're going to press file, file, and open. Yeah, but I did that and it went mm -hmm. into a different... Another tab. Okay. Yeah. So this happened. It opened in a separate yeah. by itself. What you're going to do now is click on the image itself with the move tool and image. Okay. And just drag it across into the tab that you are currently editing. All right, thanks. However, there's another option. If you happen to have the image in another tab here, this is a regular file explorer. What you can do is drag the image from the folder as a straight into Photoshop. Okay. So that's another option also. So I'm assuming everyone has, everybody has the sky by now. Now, for some or most persons, the sky layer might happen to be over all of your texts. Since the sky is a background image, you're going to come into your layers panel and you're just going to drag it behind all of your texts. Simple as that. So, what you're going to do is select the, the sky layer, you rename it to sky. To rename your layers, you can just double click. The text, which might be layers or right rectangle, it's in the sky. And you're just gonna right click on your mouse, left click on your mouse, and yep. drag the, all of the text. Okay. Hello, I'm not hearing you clearly. How did you get the amount of all this other like that? Because I have so much in one line. I want to put in go down. Wait, how did I get the word presents like this? You said? No, summer. Oh, the word summer. You have it in one line like this, right? Right. All right. What you're going to do is click where you want it to separate. So that would be between both of the ends. So you click there to put your cursor there. And just press right. enter on your keyboard. Okay. Enter but nothing happened. You press enter and nothing happened. That's what you said. You press enter and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Wait, quick question. Did you double click the word summer that way you can edit the text? I did. And it turned orange and then I pressed enter. It turned orange. Not the word, but it's highlighted in orange. Like Oh, and when you press enter, the text disappeared. No, it didn't disappear. It was highlighted in orange. Mm -hmm. and Can you sh share screen? Let me see, just to be sure. Judy. Can you see my screen? Not as yet. It's still loading. Okay. Nothing happened. 
when you press enter, nothing happens. That is strange. Press shift and enter, let's see something. Repeat that. Press shift and enter at the same time, let's see something. Highlight it first, and then press shift and just, enter? Yeah, just, no, you don't have to highlight it. Just put it, the cursor where you need it. Okay, okay. Press, no, press escape. You want to convert it to a 3D layer. This is very, very strange. Can you type the word summer again? So click your text, click the T in the corner here. Click on your canvas or your art mode. And just type the word summer for me. Oh, okay. I think I see a problem now. You draw a text box. That was your problem. Oh, yes. Okay. So to undo that option, what I want you to do, because you're going to erase this text box, you're going to press Control on your keyboard and Z. Yes. For the guys who are listening, Control and Z is a shortcut tool used to undo anything that you might have done in Photoshop. You can also go to the top where you have edit, which is next to file, and you would see undo such tasks that you would have just completed. So, Jody, yeah, control Z. All right, and you're going to undo what you did to summer also, because I realize it turned into a 3D option. So, you're going to undo that also. And we're not going to go into 3D text because that might strain a lot of people's computers right now. So, we trying to avoid that. So where you have this text that you just highlighted, delete it. So you can delete that whole layer. And where you have summer, that should be the text. You can delete that layer also. Why did I delete it? Hmm? I'm, I'm pressing backspace, but it's not deleted. Press, press escape. Escape on your keyboard. Press escape, put it in here. And what I want to do is. If I'm going there, so I delete it there. Can you repeat? Oh, yes. If you can see the layer, just delete it. Or press escape and then press delete on your keyboard. Same thing with summer also. You can select it and just click delete layer. So what I want you to do is click T in the left hand where all the tools are, or press T on your keyboard. I press T on my keyboard. Mm -hmm. And just select anywhere on the artboard right above. I'm not going to draw a text box. Yes. Just type the word summer. All caps. Between both of the M's, what I want you to do is put the cursor there and press enter. Still nothing. Press enter on your keyboard and it's not going on. All right. To counteract this, what I want you to do is delete the word M-E-R. So you just press backspace or highlight them and delete them. And you're going to click the text option again and just type it with M-E-R. That's all right. Yes. So, no, no. Click the tick to disengage that. So to confirm that change. So at the top. Yeah, at the top. We have the tick. Press that. Yeah. Move move further right. Move further right. Where you see 3D. Okay. Yeah, so you're just going to click the text, the tick option right there. What tick option? The tick. It's just a tick. The what? No, further. You're going to your far right. Go to your far right. Sorry. Yes, and just a tick. You see the tick? Click on the tick right there. Okay. All right, lovely. What you're going to do is click right below the word sum. 
a text option still engaged and add the letters M E R. All caps. Okay. This is another technique that you can use if you have a word that's too big or too long. They split into different sections as different texts and editing. I could have done the same thing with post quarantine present, but it's something simple. So in some cases, persons would do this if they want to have, let's say, the text below in a different color, a different font size, a different style. But we're not going to get too much into that. That's why I kept it simple. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's okay for now. Right, can I stop sharing screen? Yes, you can. All right, so that's it. All right. So I'm just going to move my text down a little bit because I'm going to add the coconut branches at the top and it may take up some of the space and the words will get covered. So now we're going to add in the coconut branches at the top. So remember I showed you that you could drag your images in from windows. So here we go. So you just drag across and it shows up. And what we're going to do is drag the image and place it at the top because that's where we want it to be. So let's zoom out and have a look at where we're at right now. And now we're going to take a peek at the reference file or the file that we're going to create to see what we have to do now. So now we're going to add the water and we have to add more branches. But some of you, but some of you are wondering how am I going to get more branches here when we have two branch options to teach? What I did pretty much copy and paste, just copy this layer here and paste it back in place and resize it. So what you're going to do with coconut branches layer selected, you're going to press edit and copy. Afterwards, sorry about that. Afterwards, we're going to press edit or select edit and click paste. We'll come back on the screen, probably where it was initially. I'm just going to drag it. So, for those who might have just realized, my sky layer just moved accidentally. Now, we don't want that to happen, so we're going to click go over to the layers panel, and there you see that lock icon right next to where you see show, which is 100%. You're going to click the lock icon. That way, I could select anything but the sky option. We're going to lock the background layer also since we don't want to have that moving around. And so we're going to lock the background layer. Right. So now to fix the coconut branches. So we're just going to click the coconut branch layer and drag it up. Now, some of you might be wondering, but how am I going to get more branches if I just drag the layer up and it's pretty much in front? What are you going to do now? Is the size it? Yes, hello. When I try to add the coconut branches, it, it's telling me something about not a Photoshop document. Not a Photoshop document. That's very strange. That's very, very strange. Can I see your screen again? Well, actually, I'm using my tab for the Zoom session, my laptop for the, um, <laughs> to follow along better. So I'm using not... your laptop. Oh, oh yeah. can you, um, let me see. Point your camera at your laptop and turn on your camera. Okay, one moment. Let me see. No problem. I don't know if any students might have that problem. So let's see if we can fix that also. One moment. No problem. How do you switch the camera for this? Um, I'm not sure what to tell you to click. Okay. So when you try to drag the coconut branches into Photoshop, let's see. click open. Okay, it's working now. Oh, it's okay now. <laughs> oh, 
sometimes that tends to happen. So what are you going to do at this stage currently? Just select. I think maybe that's happening because his mm-hmm. images are still in the file that we got in our email. Because that's what's happening with me at first. I had to extract mm-hmm. all of the pictures before mm-hmm. I could use it. Yeah, but I did so that. That's I issue. did that. That's very strange. But now that it's working, we're just going to drag the image from the other tab into the tab that we're editing. OK, OK, well, I could do that part. Thank you very much. Anybody have any issues they want me to clarify before I move on? Um, Mikhail? Yes. And you could just repeat the process of how you drag the coconut branches in, please. Okay, that's no problem. So let us suppose we have the image open in you know, regular file explorer and you wish to add it in. Instead of going to file open, you could just click on the image in the folder just drag it into Photoshop and then it will load up. So that way it would not open in a separate tab and you have to drag it over. Everyone clear on that? So now to fill this here more coconut branches. So now we're supposed to have two copies of the coconut branches, well, an extra copy of the coconut branch in the layers panel. So selecting one of the copy, and you could probably lock one of those. So how did you bring the text in front of the branches? Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that person who just asked that question, they're probably, let's see at this stage here. Now, how to get the text in front of the branches is you're gonna click on the sky option and move it behind text in the layers option here. Right. I'm going to undo it and do it again. So the sky option or your coconut branches are probably above the text. So what you want to do is bring it to the back. Right. Think of your layers panels are like a deck of cards. And the ones that you want to see mostly or predominantly be at the front or at the top. Right. Okay, well. Assuming that we're all at this stage now, I'm going to lock back the sky layer so it doesn't move around. We don't want that. All right, Michael, um, quick question again, right? Mm-hmm. I've got you uh-huh. the importance of the branches, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you drag it from the open folder, right? Right. right. Then you lock it. You lock you... one. You lock one of them. So you have to do it twice? Yeah, you're doing it twice. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, right. Wait, 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 wait. What you're going to do in this stage, you're going to click edit at the top, top left, click mm-hmm. copy, and then open mm-hmm. back edit again and peace. Okay, hold on one no second. Problem. No problem. Another way you could do it much faster is select the layer that you wish to copy and you press control and C on your keyboard, just like if you're going to copy a text whilst in Microsoft Word or whatever have you. And then you're going to press Control and V to paste. So once again, Control and C to copy, and Control and V to paste. I think everybody got that. How to lock the layers. Now, in your layers panel, where you see some options, you're going to see kind, normal, and then you're going to see some icons here. What you're going to do is go across to your far right, just before fill, there's something that looks like a lock. You're going to click on that. So if you click on it, it locks the layer. It doesn't move. So now in one of the copy of the coconut branches, we're going to resize it. We're going to make it much larger than the one that's already there. So you're just going to click on the bounding box and just resize it. It doesn't really, doesn't necessarily matter how or which direction you resize it. Because as you realize, I already stretched this and it gives the illusion that there are a lot of coconut branches there. And it's the same image that I just resized. And when you're finished resizing, you're just going to hit the tick option or you can press enter on your keyboard to confirm that change. Okay. 
Hello. I'm actually not seeing like mm -hmm. the lock and the things that you have. Okay. Um, can, right you side, like... can you share your screen? Okay, sure, no problem. Are you seeing it? I don't see it. It's probably still. Can see it now. Okay. Oh, okay. where you have where you have those three dashed those three dashed lines next to layer composition. Next to layer composition. Yeah, it just says layer comps. Oh, here, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so go across. Yes, right. Click on it and click close tab group. I'm unable to see all this. Your layer should be showing up with. Can you go to window now at the top next to view? Select that and come down to layers. Click it? Yes, click it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, you said to move um, one of the coconut to where? Yeah, coconut branches. Okay, so you're gonna the coconut branch at the top. Yes. You're gonna select that layer in the layers panel, and you're gonna press Control and C on your keyboard. I'm gonna go. Just now, press. Press. Um, you see that box at the top with the circle and the slash through it. Right now, you. No, you're not going to lock it as yet. You're going to copy this layer and paste it back. So I want you to select the coconut branches. Press, press C, you said? And Control and C. Control on your keyboard. Oh, Control. Okay, sorry. Yes. For the Mac users out there, I think in place of Control, it would be Command and C and Command and V. All right, so Control and C to copy and Control and V to paste. Okay. Right, paste it. Control and C. Mm -hmm. To copy the layer. Control and V to paste. And paste. Right. You've successfully paste the layer. What you can do before you move the layer at the bottom, the first coconut branches layer, which would be the one below in your layer panel, or the second layer, you're going to lock that one. So, yes, select it and then select the lock icon. So, where you have because uh, yes, click that. Uh -huh. So selecting the other coconut branch layer, you're going to resize it now. Here? No, no, no. You're just gonna oh, oh just, I just gonna resize the image. No, no, no. Press escape. Press escape. Just gonna select the coconut branches layer. Select it over here. Yes, yeah, select it in your layers and press Control and T. Right. So now and that you see, it. yes, just bring it up. Leave it there. Yes, that could work. And at the bottom right, where you press see that tick? little square, not as yet, not as yet. At the bottom right, where you see that tick. Did not the little the little box. You're gonna click and drag to resize, like how you would re resize an image in Microsoft. Okay. Hmm? I do. Yeah, you can stretch it bigger, much more bigger, because you wanna give the illusion that there's a lot of branches there. But if you resize on the left, that means you'd have to move the image to the right. I like this. Yes, so keep resizing. Mm -hmm. Oh, more. Yeah, nice. what you could, wait, wait, what you could do is move the image across to the right. That's all. Like that? That's yeah. okay now? Yeah, that's okay now. And I bring this down. How do I bring it right down? Hey, what did it's you gone. Do? I don't know. 
I tried to bring down the sum apart. All right, that's no problem. Just press control. Oh, yeah, in crop preview. That means you're going to crop the photo. Press escape on the keyboard, or you can select and control and Z. I need to control and Z. That's the undo. And control and Z again. Yeah, I'm pressing the control and Z, but mm -hmm. I don't see anything coming. Oh, at the top where you see there's a check mark, there's this not sign. Screen is black. Go to edit and select on, and you select undo. Where is undo in Eddie? Normally it would be at the top. Let me with the at the top. Okay, scroll up some more. Mm -hmm. Undo crop. And undo it again. Right, there we go. What I was trying to do was get the button so blue down some more. Oh, okay. You want to resize the artboard? Pretty much, because it's a square. What you're going to do now is press, select the move tool, which is the top the icon at the top and click on the background and drag it down. Okay. Wait. And how do I get it to cover all of it? Can you see all some parts? It. It won't you could select it and drag it across to the left. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, I have one more question, please. No problem. In my layers part, mm -hmm. you see I have like some extra stuff. How yes. do I get rid of them? You can select them. Oh, we have a lot of extra stuff. You can select them and just press delete on your keyboard. If you wish to select multiple of those things that you want to delete, you can press control on your keyboard and select the layers that you wish to delete. So that way we'll be able to select multiple layers. Okay, thank you. You can use that process if you need to move a group of layers together also. So if you need to move, let's say all the text, which would be summer, the dates and what's not, you can press control and select all the text options and move them across or apply an effect to them accordingly. I initially put the wrong width. I don't have the same width as you, is that okay? Because I don't know, I'll change it. That's no? okay for now, but since we're here, I could go over resize in an artboard just in case. So what you can do, or everyone, if they have the wrong size, you're going to go to image size. No, you're going to go to image, my bad. And then select canvas size. And when that opens, you'll be able to see the actual size of the artboard. So what you're going to adjust here for me, you're going to adjust the height to 1350. But before you do click OK, before you do click OK, I would like for you to, where you have the anchor points there with the dot and the arrows all over it, I want you to select the top, the top box, the, row, the box at the top middle, right where you have the mouse, click right there. So that would increase the height going downwards rather than both left, right, up and down. So when you okay. select, okay, press okay now. So you should have more space at the bottom, lovely. So you can afford to move things downwards now. Okay, so, thank yeah. you. No problem. Just to run that over in the event, you wanted to increase more space at the top, what you do is click the anchor points at the bottom. So more space would increase going vertically. Should I stop sharing now? Yes. Thank you. No So here we are. 
So picking up where we left off. So we have one of the coconut branches pretty much bigger than the other one. And it looks like we're already having some more coconut leaves going on. To add some more to that, what you're going to do again is copy that same layer. So you're going to press Ctrl and C, copy it, and you're going to press Ctrl and V. Right. Now, we're not done as yet. We're not just going to drag it to the top and resize it again. What we are going to do is flip it. So we're going to move what's on the left to the right. Well, I understand if you have another class, so, but I'm glad you enjoyed the session. Um, hopefully, you do enjoy the recording. All right. So what we're going to do now with this image selected, you're going to press Control and T because we want to resize the image, Control and T. You're going to see the bounding box on the resizing options up here. And what I want you to do is right click on the image, a box will appear, and you're going to click, flip horizontal. That would flip the image to the opposite side. So if you like, realize the image, there's more branches over here. Right. Let me make it smaller so you'd have a better understanding of what happened. Right. So this is the image here. If you are to click flip horizontal, it would flip the image to the opposite side. If you are to click flip vertical, it will flip, it will pretty much be upside down. So what we're going to do, since we, we don't need the image upside down, we're pretty much interested in the right side up. We're just going to flip it back vertical and flip it to the horizontal side since we don't want more leaves up here on the right side of the flag. So we're going to put the image at the top in place where we need it, and we're going to resize it pretty large. What do you press again in order to enlarge it? So when I click on it, it doesn't give me the option to enlarge. It doesn't give you an option to enlarge. Oh. Did you press Control and T on your keyboard? Okay, do we go ahead and lock this second layer? Or? Yeah, you can lock um, this second layer. All right. Yeah, because we're pretty much done with the branches for now. So you can afford to lock all of these branches there. Mm -hmm. What we can do since we're pretty much done with the branches there is for now, we can select them together. So we can press shift. We can select the first, the first branch layer and selecting shift on the keyboard, you select the last layer. That would select all three together. Rule of thumb, if you need to select multiple layers, in the layers panel, you're just gonna press shift and select wherever you want the amount of layers to stop selecting. That explains it properly. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. How do you flip? the image okay. when you press ctrl and t on your keyboard you're going to right click on the image and click flip horizontal all right thanks no problem so since we're done with the coconut branches we're going to put them in a group together to do this we may need to unlock the coconut branch layers so selecting all of them if you're having problems selecting them using shift you can press ctrl on your keyboard and select them individually. Afterwards, you're gonna right click and click group, group, group from layers, right? You're gonna just rename the group to coconut branches. I right? could just put it for short, coconut branch. So we have a nice little group right here. And now we can lock that group so nothing happens to it. Right. You could just repeat that, Makir. I, I missed that. The no group is shift. Mm -hmm. You press shift and select the last one at the bottom. So you select the first one. Right. Select the first one and hold in shift on your keyboard. You saying mm -hmm. something? Okay. Selecting shift on your keyboard, you select the last layer. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna press right click on those layers and press group from layers. Right. And then you're gonna rename another box should pop up and you're just gonna rename it. Okay. You got through that? Yeah. Another no. shortcut. You didn't? What happened? Hold on. Hold on. Let me. To select all of them, you do what? Mm -hmm. you, you select the first one. Right. And then you, you get you a need... push. Because oh, you fold up and you have to need it, and then you press OK. Mm -hmm. Say that again. I feel like I'm All right. All right. So, all right. Let me just turn the camera on to my screen, OK? OK, that's no problem. Sure. Um, I, I have it like like this. Oh, okay. You created a group with one layer inside of it. Okay. Here's what you can do. Since you already have a group created, what I want gotcha. yeah. what I want you to do is select those layers and drag it into the group. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we want. Okay. All right. No All problem. Right. To some persons who might have had that issue, you could do that also. Somebody has their mic on. Jody, you eating a snack or? I guess she doesn't feel like sharing. All right. Now that we're back here, wait. All right, so now that we're back here, let's add the water now to make the bottom interesting. So as I showed you before, you're gonna open your folder, regular file explorer, and you're gonna drag in the water puddle, the water puddle image. This is, everyone should have this on their screen. It might be bigger or smaller according. Hello? Hello, is there someone there? Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. I'm hearing you this time. Yes, hello, I could hear you. Any problems, trials, tribulations, what's up? Talk to me. Yes, this looks like mic's not working. So if you have the water puddle on your screen like such, what you're gonna do is drag it into place. Now, if we look closely at the reference flyer, it's pretty much, it's pretty much at the bottom. And I just realized I have to use the splash to back in. So we're going to take care of that so we can place the, the water puddle layer accordingly. So first thing first, we're going to move the water puddle out of the way. It doesn't necessarily matter where you move it. Right now, we just want to have room at the bottom. We'll take care of the date behind it. For some persons who might be seeing in man is like you want to get to this point here and you have to resort to doing this. Another way to counter it, that is to press space on your keyboard and you would see something like a little hand. When you click and drag, you can move the artboard to your convenience. So you can press space and drag the artboard wherever you want. So if you just want to go in this corner here, you can do that. But we're more conservative, right? So we're gonna select T. And we're just gonna press T on our keyboard and just T on our keyboard and just select on the canvas and type the word splash. If you can't see, don't be afraid. We would always move the layer. Move the layer. We're just gonna type the word splash. And yes, we know it's a bit. So we're just gonna reduce the font size. 
That's almost where we want it. Right. To see what's going on now, we're going to click on the water bubble layer and move it down to the bottom behind the text. And we're just going to disable the visibility of this layer for now. Right? Hello? We are following. Following? All right. I heard someone mic once, I was wondering what's up. I'm just going to move my text up to make room for the water for you. And remember, I told you guys to install some fonts, some fonts earlier. Now we're going to change it to those fonts. So selecting the word summer, we're going to change it to the font Open Sans. So if you select in the character panel, where you have the text, it might be you know, the React Pro for some, it might be Arial, it might be Times New Roman, Roman maybe. We're just going to select the text name, backspace it, and just type in the word open. If you have the fonts that I told you to install, install, you should be able to go into that. So if you realize I'm going through the different types of fonts in that font family. For those of you who do not have the fonts installed, you can always use a real black in a case like this to mimic the look we are trying to achieve. Arial black. I'll, so if you don't have the font that we installed, you didn't get a chance to install, you can use Arial black. It has this big blocky bold feeling to it, right? So what we wish to do now is to reduce or make the word splash a little bit more thin because the main, the main word is summer. So if you're just going to peek at the reference layer again. So if you look at this closely, you're going to realize the word splash is of a different thickness than the word summer, right? Both of them are from the same compound, it's just a different root, root, choice of the right. So what we're going to do now is select the word splash, and we're going to set it to open sounds, but I think I had it at semi bold. So I think it was that symbol when I did it yesterday. Now, if you realize that, okay, the text is pretty much running off, what you can do, you can actually select the text box or the box around the box and resize the box. Hello? Is there someone there? Mikhail? Yes, hello. Um, to, to how you bring the text in front of the layer again? Text in front of which, which layer? All right, like this summer, right? When I carry it up to like which part the palm branches is, is like mm -hmm. love it behind the behind the, the palm sky. branches, behind the oh, sky. It, oh, it's behind the sky. Oh, so in other words, you are seeing something that looks like this. Yeah. Right. Other persons who might have this going on also. That means the sky layer. Where did it go? Accidentally put it in the coconut branch. Right. So the persons who have this going on, that means the sky layer is probably locked and at the top of all of your layers. So you're just going to drag this down to the bottom. So you're putting it behind. Put it behind the text. All right. Everybody got that covered? Oh, yeah, yeah. Got it. All right. So where are we? Just gonna move the represents up a little bit to make room for the bottom. Move it up a little bit, move the summer up a little bit also. Or another trick, if you wish to move something without moving where it goes horizontally or off the plane, you can press shift on your keyboard and it locks it in a line. So if you wish to go vertical, it would stay straight, especially if it's already locked to the center or wherever you have it. Same thing for splash. So now to make sure splash is pretty much in a line with the summer, we're just going to actually resize the shape of the text by selecting the, the dots on the outside. Need to move it in a little 
those things. The little dots on the outside and just casually push in the wood a little bit. If it's too big, if it's smaller on your end, you can actually select the text. You can actually select the bounding boxes and resize the image bigger if need be. So now that that's in place, you can afford to add a little bit of space between these letters here because they are really, really close. You don't want that. So what you can do now is over here in the characters panel, increase the space between each letter. So I moved it from 48 to 60. Some of you might have 50 to 56 or 72. 60 seems to be the figure that I want. Just going to bring the word splash down just a little bit. This looks a little bit bigger than the original photo I did. Nonetheless, so now to add back in the water bottle. So we're going to head to our layers panel and look for that label that we this look for that layer that we disabled. You should see water puddle. If you have added this already, you should see water puddle with no eye in the visibility section. So when you click it, it comes up on the screen and you'll see something that looks like that. So what you're pretty much going to do now, what you're pretty much going to do now is to zoom in and position the splash. When I say position the splash, position it in such a way it looks like the splash is somewhat submerged into the water. I hope this is not too much for you guys this evening because you're already half an hour beyond our time. Nonetheless, so let's look, take a close look at the reference layer again. If we zoom in, we're gonna realize that the word splash is somewhat embedded or in the water itself, right? Everyone following me so far, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. to get the the summer separated, what you did? To get the word summer separated, what I did? Yeah. I my text was in one line, so I just typed right. the word summer shoot across, and I put the cursor between both ends, and just pressed right. it. All right. I have a light up, but how you get it centered? Center. Oh, in that case, you could press escape. Uh -huh. Press escape, the layer would automatically be selected. And what you're going to do is at the top here, you're going to, in your paragraph section, you're going to select center line. Um, Yours might be right align. Okay, I'm not, not seeing right. it. All right, yeah, I think I've got it. If you're not able to edit it up yeah. there, you can select in your paragraph tab. No, actually, I got it. Okay, you know, I'll just run in treat in case somebody just doesn't get it. Right. You could select a paragraph tab here next to character and just change it right inside of it. Your text may move because it's a ratio of the centers to the app. Not so. Okay, cool. Now, So what do we do next? Now we're gonna add our coconut trees to the side left and right. So we're gonna go to File Explorer. Whoever have the mic one, can you turn it off? And we're just gonna drag the coconut tree into Bocha. For some of you might appear big or small, but the size doesn't really matter. What we're gonna do is resize it to a much smaller size and put it in. Now to rotate an image, if you wish to rotate an image in Photoshop, once you have the image selected with all the transformation things active, you can come to the corner right here and you'll see it moves from a regular cursor to an arrow with a kind of curved arrow with two arrowheads of it. I'm just gonna rotate it. You know, give it, and you will also see an indication of how many degrees it is being rotated at. So I'm just going to rotate mine so about, let's say, 25 degrees or so. And then we're going to drag it across. 
it doesn't matter if the words are being covered at this point. What you can do is resize it if you think it's too big because the size is a little too big. And if these coconut branches are blocking it, that's a problem. You would always just move the palm tree in the near future. So I think that's where we would like it to be, for now at least. So I'm going to just select enter on the keyboard to save that change. How do you That's rotate? One minute How do you rotate? Yeah. I'm just gonna go over that again. If you need to rotate an image, you're gonna press Control and T, and you see the image here. You put the cursor at the corner points, and you see the arrow changes from just a regular arrow to a kind of curved, a curved arrow with two arrowheads at the top at the corners of it. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it, thanks. And you can just right click and just rotate, just like how you move an image in Microsoft with that thing. Okay. Right. I'm gonna put my, my shape in place. All right, so if you look at the reference layer, there's another coconut tree at the other side. So what we're gonna do is Control C to copy control D to paste it back. And we're gonna do the same horizontal trip thing you saw what I did earlier where you're gonna press control and T to resize. Right click on the image and flip horizontal. Right. Next you're just gonna drag it into place. Can you go for how you flip? Yeah, can I go for that? Okay, no problem. So we're probably here right about now. I assume everyone is here. What you're going to do is press Control C on your keyboard and then Control V to paste it. Doesn't necessarily matter where it ends up because you're going to move it. But before you do move it, what you're going to do is press Control and T to activate the transformation. To click the change or resize it, then you're going to right click on it. Click on it and click flip horizontal. You got that? Hello? You got that? Afterwards, hey, Jody? I copied it. Uh -huh. And then I can press Control T and then I got a tick box. Hmm. Should you get it true? I copied the tree mm. and try to get control C to and if I see a screen, just in case. Control T. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then right click okay. and click flip horizontal. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So now we have that in place. I should, uh, not I should, Jody, I have to care of your coconut trees, by the way. <laughs> So I'm just making some slight adjustment to my coconut trees there because I realized one of the branches kind of overshadowing one of my coconut trees. So I'm just going to carry. We're not seeing your screen. 
Oh my god, sorry about that. Answer that. Alright, so now we're gonna just carry up one of my coconut branches because if you look closely here, it's kind of overshadowing this coconut, right? So I'm just gonna unlock the coconut branch layer in my layers panel. With this, with this selected, I'm just gonna drag it upwards just a little bit and just carry up the coconut tree like so. Everyone should be here or around here. So what we're going to do next is add in the footer. You want to have a clear idea of where you want to put your footer. You could use guidelines. Now what are guidelines? Guidelines help you put this stuff on Photoshop. So if you click at the top where you should have rulers, and if you don't have your rulers engaged, you're just going to click View, you're going to click view, which is next to 3D, and you're just going to come on to rulers and take it. So when you do that, you're supposed to have the guideline showing up both at the top and at the bottom. So what you're going to do now is set a guide of about, let's say, 60 pixels. If you press shift on your keyboard while it's dragging the guides, it will move incrementally across by, let's say, 10 pixels. You just want to set 60 pixels there. I'm just going to do, let's say, 10, 18 minus 60. Because you want to put 10, 13, 50 minus 60. Because you want to put a photo at the bottom here. I'm just going to click new, a new guide. This will allow you to enter where exactly you want that guide to be. So let's say 13, 50 minus 60. That should give us 12, 90. Let's see, 1290, oh, my bad, I was supposed to select horizontal. I think we're supposed to be wrapping up shortly, guys, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with masking. I'm just going to show you how to put in the footer, and over some text, and that should be it. So if you look closely, you have a guideline up there in here. Now we're just going to go to your shape tool, which is this rectangle right here. You can also press U on your keyboard to activate that. So on some versions of Photoshop, you might have this going on where when you select the shape on you, which to draw, to draw it, you just click right, left click, and just drag. Some of your versions, it might look like this. It may look like this. It may look like this, right? The older versions, it may look like this. I'm just going to drag to the end of the artboard. And we're going to have that right there. And what we're going to do is change the color. So how do we change the color of the shape? You can, in the layers panel where you would see rectangle one, you can change the name to footer. Or whatever you want it to be. You're just going to select where you see that bounding box on the layer. So when you select that, that means you're going to be able to change the color. Now, another thing or feature of the eyedropper tool, another feature of the color picker tool there is the eyedropper inside. So that way you're able to sample colors that's already on the artboard that you wish to use. So that way you can afford to use complementary colors on your artboard. If it is you can't find the color that you want, then you could manually set the color that you wish to use. So then you would select OK to confirm that change. And now we're just gonna put no glass bottles allowed because we don't want anybody to be getting any busted in any fight. So what we're gonna do next is deselect the rectangle tool and select the text, the text tool. You could zoom in so that we would see what you're doing. Just click here. The text might be large because the last text option was large, but you're just going to type no glass bottles are uh, allowed. Just going to press escape when you finish making those changes, or you can click the tick at the top and you can go 
going to characters panel and change the size to something very small. Change it to something, sorry, change. Sorry, I was just checking the chat box in the event anyone had any questions. So yes, we're gonna resize it to something small, let's say 12, maybe. And now, I'm just gonna move it in place. It might be a little too big, because if you realize it's, it runs off of the foot, so you could increase it to like maybe size 11 or so. Or you could increase the height of the foot, your choice. You are the design. So now, we're gonna look at changing the colors of text. Look closely, you can barely see what color this is if you have to zoom out. So, to change the color of the text, you select the color option right below where you see the 100% and just set it to white. Okay. You just set it to white, just one single click and you set it to white. You can set it to any color. Set it to any color. If you want, you could click red, cyan, pink. But white is easier to use, so we're gonna go with white. Oh, sorry about the filter. We have to end now. So I'm sorry, guys. We have to end now. So hopefully, you can catch that in the report. So. What you're going to do now is save. I just realized I didn't tell you guys to save while it's editing. You're just going to click save. And you're going to be able to save the, the artwork wherever you wish or desire to save. So everyone should have this at least, something that resembles this at least. Hi, Mikhail. Mikhail. Hey. Yes. Hey. Thank you so much, so much for that You're wonderful welcome. session. Now, everybody, to show Mikhail some love, please send some clapping emoji, star <laughs> emoji, all kind of emoji in the chat because that was excellent. Thank you so that's, much for tuning in to the first session of that's our you guys Photoshop training session mm -hmm. put on by the Commuters Publications Committee. We hope you learned a great deal and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. A yes, special so thanks to our presenter, Mikhail, uh, Henry, and to our team working behind the scenes uh, to ensure we had a smooth delivery for today. Don't forget to follow our social media pages, guys. It will be posted in the chat area. Make sure you follow all of we Make sure you follow Mikhail as well. <laughs> uh, the presenter for tomorrow's session will be Shanil Imhoff. Uh, from UE, she's the UE Five Islands Guild Publications Committee Chairperson. She'll be focusing on the essential layers, a comprehensive introduction to the utilization of the layers, layer panels, and layer effects. My name is Aishiba Cornwall, and I will see you tomorrow, same place, right. same time, as we continue to connect with all campuses through Photoshop. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Do look forward to teaching you guys some other time. All right. All right.